I love traveling across Pennsylvania. There are lots of beautiful places along the way. On Interstate 80, I like to see the picture-perfect farms as I enter central Pennsylvania. I like seeing the brownstone in the sides of the hills where they've cut through to make room for the interstate. I like the lush green hills in the midst of summer as I drive across the turnpike in those same hills that explode with color each and every fall. But perhaps the most beautiful sight of all is the sign that reads, Service Plaza, one mile. When you have a specific need that needs to be addressed. Can I get an amen on that? Is there a sweeter sight than a service plaza when you need Starbucks or when you need gasoline or when you need food or when you need a bathroom or when you need a place to stretch your legs or when you need to take your child that you've just been potty training to the bathroom or you need a changing station because your son or daughter in diapers has managed to exceed the capacity of said diaper and everyone else in the car knows it? Is there a sweeter sight? I don't think so. This is one time, this is one time when you see that service plaza and you instinctively respond through the power of the Holy Spirit, thank God, and you mean it. You are not dishonoring God's name. You are sincerely grateful to God that he has sustained you to this point in your journey and that God inspired someone to build a service plaza on this site. Okay, maybe that's a stretch. But you get the idea. And so you stop and you get what you need to get and you do what you need to do. And you walk back to your car and you are refueled as is your car. You are relieved, you are refreshed, you are reinvigorated so that you can resume your journey. Maybe while you were there you reminded yourself of your route as you looked on the wall, the map that was on the wall as you entered or exited. You lost a little time on that stop, but it was worth it. It was way worth it. If you are driving and you announce that you need to stop, if you are riding in the car and you announce that you need to stop, and you request the driver to stop, and someone wants to know why we should stop at this particular time, at this particular place, you could offer one of the reasons that I just mentioned, and you would stop. Today, today we begin a series of messages intended to answer the question, why do we do what we do? As Christian people who believe in Jesus, who gather on a regular basis, why do we do certain things? And today, the message answers the question, why should I attend? In the event that the Steeler playoff game was scheduled for today, I was prepared to respond to that question, why should I attend, by simply saying, I just told you and then dismissing you for early dismissal so that you can make it to your Steeler parties. And by the looks of some of you, maybe you would like to have that time to go back to bed uh, because we were up pretty late watching that game. But since they played last night, I will take the opportunity to give you a complete message today. In the ritual for new members in the United Methodist Church, we find these words. The church is of God and will be preserved to the end of time for the conduct of worship, for the due administration of God's word and sacraments, for the maintenance of Christian fellowship and discipline, for the edification of believers and the conversion of the world, all of every age and station stand in need of the means of grace which it alone supplies. What does all that mean? It means that the church was, is God's idea. That the church will last forever. That the church exists to provide worship of God, preaching of God's word, communion and baptism, fellowship among Christians, and the edification of believers and the conversion of the world. Now, I think you understand most everything I just said, except maybe for that one phrase, the edification of believers. This is a very significant phrase. 
To edify means to instruct or to enlighten so as to encourage moral or spiritual improvement. It means to build up. That's what the church is here to do. That's the reason we come, to be encouraged, to be spiritually improved, to be built up, and, and to help that to happen in the lives of others. So let's consider one of our scripture passages for today, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. We should receive these words as though they are addressed to us because we are current day believers. And, and the author says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we possess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. And let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Why should you attend church every Sunday? Why should we prioritize coming to worship services more than once or twice a month for the same reason that we would stop at a service plaza to refuel, to be refreshed, to be reminded, to reconnect, and to be reinvigorated? To refuel. We stop at a service plaza for gasoline, for coffee, for water, for Diet Coke, for snacks, or we stop at a meal. And when we stop, we, or our car, is running low on energy, anticipating that we will soon run out of energy. Coming to church each Sunday refuels us. It provides a fresh infusion of spiritual food for our souls. Attending worship gives us energy and enthusiasm as we prepare to begin another week. Coming to church refills our tank to be refreshed. You should attend so that you can be refreshed. When I'm driving, I sometimes stop at a rest area to stretch my legs, to stretch my back, to get out of the car, to walk around. I need a change of pace. Often I go into the men's room, I splash cold water on my face, in my eyes, and that way I get refreshed as well. After I had back surgery, my doctor told me I should stop every two hours when I'm driving to stretch, to change my posture. That works for me. Coming to church every Sunday does the same for us. It is a change from our routine. It refreshes our mind and souls. Our eyes and our hearts are opened anew. We receive more energy. We receive new energy every time we come. The Holy Spirit that dwells inside us and functions at the very core of our relationship to Jesus is enlivened. It is awakened to work inside us. I attend to be refreshed in my faith by seeing what God is still doing through the Holy Spirit of God dwelling in me. To be reminded. You should come you should attend each work so that each week rather so that you can be reminded sometimes when i stop i review my journey when i stop at a rest stop i review my journey i go over where i am headed will i continue to follow the route that i have set or might i change it how is my timing with what I had hoped to accomplish? Are there construction areas of which I need to be aware? Will I hit a particular area at a specifically difficult time of high traffic? Do I really need to drive through Connecticut? When I come to worship, I am reminded of who I am, of who God is, how important I am to God, and how important God is to me. I'm reminded of where I want to go, 
where I want to be spiritually. I hear once again about what God has done for me, how Jesus died for me, and how important I am to God. I remind myself that I want to live to please God, and I want to honor God with my life. I want to serve Him with my life, and I want, hel- I want to help others to know about God as well. To reconnect, I come, and you should come, so that we can reconnect. I love coming to church. There is no place I would rather be. When I come and I see you, I get filled with joy. When you are not here, something is missing. I come to have a reunion with those who believe as I believe, who struggle as I struggle, and rely upon the Lord for His help just as I do. I come to reconnect with my brothers and sisters in the family of God. To be reinvigorated. I attend to be reinvigorated. God is at work in my life. God is working in your life as well. Sometimes, often, God uses you to work in my life. When I worship together with you, my spirit is lifted. It is energized. When we are together, my hope and trust in God thrives. When I see you here, that makes my day. When I hear how God has worked in the lives of others or how God is working in and through you, I love that. It provides a boost to my faith. I like coming together to be in God's presence because because who knows what's going to happen today? Who knows what God might do among us? Will someone who has been resistant to God finally say yes to God? Will someone have a change of heart? Will someone be healed physically or emotionally or spiritually because they are here in God's presence and because we prayed for them and we prayed with them? Because where two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus says, I am with them also. When we are not together, when you do not come to church, I'm disappointed. When you don't come, there are less voices in the room singing praises to God. I mean, seriously, don't you love it when we, we are packed on Christmas Eve and everyone is singing, O oh, come all ye faithful, or a silent night. And isn't it awesome, isn't it awesome when both choirs are singing together and we are doubly blessed? Doesn't it lift your spirit and provide you with a greater worship experience? When you don't come, I wonder why. Is it me? Or has your love for God waned? Has your passion to be with the people of God weakened? Is worship not that important to you? You know, the Lord inhabits the praises of His people. Are you drifting away from God? Are you in a spiritual crisis? Are you questioning whether God loves you anymore or whether God still knows your name? Because He does, you know. He still knows your name, who you are. He still loves you. Are you too busy with your life? Is there too much going on? Is your life too cluttered to come? After God created the earth in six days, he rested on the seventh day. Interesting. Even God needed to rest. And that's why he gave us the fourth commandment, to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it. To keep it holy, sacred, dedicated to God. 
When you come, you bring life into the room that we all share. You bring your portion of the Holy Spirit that provides for a stronger presence of the Holy Spirit in the room. Your presence contributes to a richer, fuller, and better worship experience. My wife and I always eat at the dining room table. It's always better when my sons are there. Lately, there's been one here, one there, sometimes two. So it's good when they're there. But there is nothing like having dinner when they are all there. It's even better. And so it is when we gather when we are all here, it is even better. When we come together, we reconnect with each other, and we reconnect with God. Sometimes we think we will worship God on our own, but we won't. We don't. Sometimes we say, I can worship God anywhere. I worship God in the woods when I'm hunting. Tell me about that. How does that work? Do you sing? Do you praise? Do you read God's word when you're there? Do you pray? And what do you pray for? You see, friends, the church was God's idea. Jesus first spoke of the church when he said, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church exists for our benefit. Some of you may have seen the Bernardi My Story that we saw earlier today. You may have seen it before, but we selected it because we just thought it was perfect for today. And, and Teresa says that when they started to come, she felt like the messages were directed at her. And she shared that with her small group, and they said, that, well, that was God speaking to you through the messages. And do you remember what she said next? She said, I didn't think I was that important, but I guess it was important for us to be here. It is important for you to be here, for me, for you, for all of us. Billy Graham once told a story of a pastor who went to visit a man from his church who had been absent from his church for a long time. And they came together, they sat in his his living room, they sat in front of the fire in separate chairs, gazing at the fire, and the pastor said not a word to his parishioner. And then suddenly the pastor walked over to the fire and he grabbed the tongs and he picked up a red hot coal and he removed it from the fire and he placed it on the hearth. And its bright red glow began to fade. Soon it was gray as it cooled just sitting there on the hearth as the pastor returned to his seat. Then the pastor got up again, and he went back to the fire. He returned the coal to the fire, and soon it was as red hot as the rest of the fire. The pastor showed himself out of his parishioner's home without saying a word. The following Sunday, the man was back in church. You see, friends, there is something significant about God's people gathered together with the intent of worshiping him, with the intent of learning from his word, with the intent of pointing others to God's gospel and to the grace that God extends to all of us. There is power in the number of God's people. To be refueled, to be refreshed, to be reminded, to reconnect, 
and to be reinvigorated. This is why we attend. That is why we come.